Hello and welcome to the video on Strategic Objective 3 Indicator 1 or SO31 Trends in the proportion of land under drought over the total land area By the end of this video you will know more about the UNCCD definition of drought and how the indicator describes meteorological drought hazard the use of the Standardised Precipitation Index, or SPI, to calculate the indicator. How to select the most appropriate data source for the SPI. How to calculate the SPI and estimate the extent and proportion of the drought intensity classes. How to create gridded spatial summaries for the baseline and reporting periods. Drought occurs when precipitation is significantly below average, long enough to cause serious hydrological imbalances that adversely affect land resource production systems. Indicator SO31 describes the status of meteorological drought hazards by identifying the proportion of land under drought using four meteorological drought intensity classes. With the provision of spatial data in Praise 4, parties can see what regions are experiencing more extreme droughts in order to prioritise mitigation efforts. And estimate drought risk in conjunction with assessments of drought exposure. SO32 – Trends in the proportion of the population exposed to drought. And vulnerability. SO33 – Trends in the degree of drought vulnerability. The SPI is recommended to be used as a basis for calculating indicator SO31, given its endorsement by the World Meteorological Organization to monitor meteorological drought in the Lincoln Declaration on Drought Indexes. However, Parties may use other indices if already in use at national level, such as the Standardised Precipitation Evapotranspiration Index, or SPEI, that is readily comparable to the SPI and is more reliable in arid areas. The reporting process for Indicator SO31 consists of estimates of the area under four drought intensity classes, as defined by the SPI, and of the proportion of the total area under drought, regardless of intensity. The reporting process for SO31 includes seven steps. If parties decide to use the default data, steps 2 to 5 are unnecessary. Let's begin with the first step in the reporting process, which is selecting the precipitation dataset. The pre-filled default data in the PRAISE platform is derived from the Global Precipitation Climatology Centre GPCC, monitoring product. A gridded precipitation product at 1 degree spatial resolution, approximately 111 km at the equator, derived from rain gauge data. An alternative default dataset available in Trends.Earth is the Climate Hazards Group Infrared Precipitation with Stations CHIRPS, but its coverage is limited to 50 degrees south to 50 degrees north. Alternatively, parties may use national or regional precipitation products, especially if they have a higher spatial resolution and or a longer period of record compared to the default data. This decision tree may help parties choose the best precipitation data source to derive indicator SO31. The decision tree can be found in the Good Practice Guidance for National Reporting on Strategic Objective 3. The second step in the reporting process is calculating the SPI. Monthly time series of the SPI are calculated using the SPI-12 method, which provides an annual summary of precipitation deficits for each month using a 12-month accumulation method. 
For example, the 12-month precipitation accumulation for December 2019 is the total monthly precipitation for January 2019 to December 2019. The WMO Climatological Standard Normal Period of 1981 to 2010 is used as reference period to normalize the 12-month precipitation accumulation data distributions. The normalization method is based on a gamma probability distribution function fitted to the 12-month precipitation accumulations in this reference period. To produce the normalized monthly SPI 12 time series for each grid cell from 2000 to the last available year. A change in the standard climate normal period necessitates a recalculation of the SPI for the baseline and all historic reporting periods. Therefore, parties should state the reference period used to calculate the SPI. The third step in the reporting process is identifying the drought intensity class of each grid cell. The December SPI-12 values representing the precipitation deficits or excesses over the January to December period are used to assign an SPI drought intensity class to each grid cell. Positive SPI values indicate that there was no drought in the given period and are not taken into account in the indicator calculation. The total area under each drought intensity class is estimated by adding the area of the grid cells in each drought intensity class. Project the drought intensity class grid into a suitable equal area projection, for example, mole wider, to obtain the cell's true area in square kilometre before calculating the total area of each drought class. The extend of each drought intensity class is reported per year in Table S031.T1. The fourth step in the reporting process is calculating the proportion of land under drought. The total area under drought, that is, the sum of the area under all drought intensity classes, as well as the proportion of the total land area under drought, on an annual basis should be reported in S031.T2, which is calculated as percentage of the total land area for each year. Annual total land area is derived from the addition of all terrestrial land cover classes reported in S011.T5. The fifth step in the reporting process is creating a gridded spatial summary for the baseline and reporting periods. The spatial summary is useful to map the most extreme conditions that occurred in the baseline and reporting periods. The spatial summary is calculated in four-year intervals or epochs during the baseline and reporting period. The most extreme drought intensity class in each four-year epoch is identified for each grid cell. The sixth step in the reporting process is verifying the results. Parties should provide a qualitative assessment of the indicator. However, please note that due to the effect of natural climate variability on the occurrence of droughts, any observed changes or trends in the proportion of land under drought over this short time frame should be interpreted with caution. Reported estimate should always be verified by national experts before submission, especially when using default data. Parties should highlight situations where the confidence level of the reported data might be low. The seventh step in the reporting process is generating reports. Parties should save the form and, once the default or national data has been verified and approved by experts, parties may submit the estimates as a revision. 
it is advisable to submit a revision when the other indicators under S03 have also been completely reported and approved. For estimates generated using national data, parties should provide narratives on the methodology, data sources and data accuracy. Geospatial datasets of drought hazard for the mentioned epochs of the baseline period and the reporting periods. We have reached the end of this video on S031 trends in the proportion of land under drought over the total land area. In this video, you familiarised yourself with UNCCD's definition of drought and how the indicator describes meteorological drought hazard. You learnt about the use of SPI to calculate the indicator, how to select the most appropriate data source for the SPI, how to calculate the SPI and estimate the extent and, and proportion of the drought intensity classes, and how to create gridded spatial summaries for the baseline and reporting periods. Thanks for your time.